When a local fisherman went to the river in hopes of catching his dinner for the week, he saw something truly unexpected. Without even thinking, he rescued a nearby bear cub from a dangerous situation. But it's what happened next that truly shocked him to his core. Joe and his family had moved into the forest area in an effort to live off the grid. It was a common movement at the time, especially for those experiencing corporate burnout. Joe, like many others, came home one day and decided that he no longer wished to live his life as it was. His wife had recently given birth to their second child and was staying at home. They were both nature lovers, and after much deliberation, they decided to move into the forest and become completely independent from the bustling city life. While this seemed like a lovely idea at first, it was a lot of hard work. Not only would they have to plant fresh produce and hunt for their own meat, but they would also have to care for their young children and educate them without the help of teachers or babysitters. Safe to say, they had their fair share of work cut out for them. However, they were extremely happy. They bought a small cabin and only brought the necessary furniture and appliances with them. One of the most important items was the fridge and freezer because food had to stay fresh. Joe had grown up hunting with his father and was quite adept at it, though his favorite hobby was fishing. He enjoyed the process more, and on a good day, he could stock their freezer up for a week with some healthy, fresh fish. Every Sunday, he would take it upon himself to go to his spot on the river and fish for whatever he could catch. His goal was to fill the bucket. It was a simple one, but sometimes still hard to achieve. One fateful day, he left his happy little family at the break of dawn to go fishing. It was going to be a beautiful day, and Joe felt lucky. He was sure he was going to have a successful fishing day. Little did he know what awaited him when he arrived at his spot. He made sure to check his surroundings, as he did live in bear country. The coast was clear, and he felt relieved. He knew that if a bear were to arrive, the best defense was retreat. He never wanted to cause any trouble with such beautiful yet fierce creatures. After about two hours of fishing, Joe couldn't help but feel slightly disheartened. He had only caught one trout and one salmon. While this would feed his family, it would only tide them over for two days. He knew he needed more, so he continued to fish. He thought that perhaps if he moved deeper into the river, he might have a better chance of catching more fish. So he ventured in. As he was doing so, though, something caught the corner of his eye. It was the movement of something big. Trying not to move too quickly, he slowly turned to the side to see what it was. Sure enough, it was a big animal, a big grizzly bear. Not only that, but a mother bear with her cub. They were further upriver, fishing as well. Joe hoped and prayed that they hadn't noticed him, but it was too late. They both turned and looked downriver right at him. The mother bear threw her head up into the air and started sniffing. It was apparent that she wanted to evaluate the threat that was in the water fishing down the river. Though, it quickly became apparent that she didn't view Joe as a threat right then. She continued fishing in the river by herself. Joe tried so hard to regulate his breathing. He was facing his worst nightmare. He was glad that she didn't see him as a threat but thought it might be a good idea to try and exit the area while she still felt that way. He slowly turned around to exit the river when he heard a sudden noise. The bear cub had been playing along the riverbank next to its mother while she fished, but suddenly he slipped and fell right into a raging current. Before his mother could even react, the poor little cub was being swept down the river toward Joe. Because of his small size, he didn't stand a chance in the rapid river. Joe heard the little animal squeal as he fell and watched the poor little bear struggle, willing to keep his head above water. Without even a thought, Joe aligned himself with the cub's incoming direction and waited to catch him. It worked perfectly. As the cub approached Joe, he threw his hands into the water and grabbed it without hesitation. He held the poor cub close to his chest while it caught its breath, stroking its drenched fur. Unlike anything Joe had expected, the little cub just hugged him with its short wet paws. Joe could feel its little heartbeat racing through his chest. At that moment, Joe was so happy he had saved the little cub that he forgot one thing, 
the mother. He was quickly reminded of his impending doom when he heard a loud splash and moan from behind him. Sure enough, the mother bear had quickly made her own way down the riverbank to where Joe was. She was standing anxiously at the water's edge, unsure of what to do. She wanted her cub back but was wary of the creature that was holding it. Joe took the deepest breath he had ever taken and turned around to face danger. He knew he needed to get the cub back to its mother. The idea of approaching a fully grown bear terrified him. He plucked up the courage from somewhere and slowly made his way forward. Once he got to the very shallow water, he put the cup down. He then quickly backed away into the safety of the rushing river, knowing that the mother would probably ignore him in favor of her baby. The cub wasted no time getting back to his mother as quickly as he could, much to Joe's relief. The little bear seemed fine. The mother was grunting at her offspring, almost as if telling him off for playing too close to the rapid currents. It was a sweet moment to witness. Joe, however, was hyper aware of what might happen if the mother decided he was a threat. After all, after a few moments, though, it seemed she truly had no interest in him at all. So, he did the only thing he could think of, he continued fishing. Having left his bucket on the riverbank, he resigned himself to the fact that he would lose the fish he had caught to the bears. Trying hard not to stare at them too much, he simply turned his back to the river and continued fishing. Of course, just because he had been a hero didn't mean his luck had changed. He stood in that water for over an hour more, desperate for another catch, only for his line to come back empty. Up until this point, he hadn't dared to look back in the direction of the bears. A few minutes earlier, he had heard splashing and commotion behind him, but then realized the sounds were no more. The bears must have gotten out of the water. Curiosity got the better of him, and he turned around, hoping to see them gone, only to be met with a sight that truly shocked him to his core. Mother and cub were in a distant bush eating something. This brought great relief to the knot in his stomach. He was hopeful that he might be able to make a successful escape now. But when he looked where his bucket had been, he was in awe. All that splashing and commotion he had heard behind him had indeed been the mother bear fishing. Only, she wasn't fishing for herself. Rather, she had formed a great pile of fish around Joe's bucket, all beautiful big salmon. Joe could hardly believe his eyes as he slowly approached his bucket. Emerging from the water, the mother bear stood up in the bush and made a big noise while looking directly at him. She then started to move away with her cub. Joe quickly realized that this was her way of thanking him for saving her baby. He was over the moon. This simple gesture on her behalf meant he and his family had food for over a month. What had started out as a bad day ended up being one for the books, all because Joe had overcome his fear and been an unexpected hero. When Joshua, a park ranger, found a leopard and its three cubs in danger, he didn't know what to do. But he knew he had to help them, or the consequences would be dire. Deep in southern Africa, the leopard is known as an elusive animal. People from all over the world come to this place to see this beautiful animal. Only on the most occasional occasions do tourists get to spot the leopard, considered one of the five famous animals in southern Africa. They are a highly protected species. Joshua has worked in National Reserve Park throughout his career. His adoration for nature and wildlife fuels his passion for his work and he takes great pride in it. On one fateful day, his work passion was truly tested. He finds himself in a situation he has never experienced before. The day begins the same as every day before it. It is summer. The atmosphere is calm and the sky is clear. Although it was sweltering, Joshua didn't mind because he just wanted to catch a glimpse of his favorite animal in the park. He is a happy worker. Leopards hunt for food in the afternoon or at night. Sometimes you can see them during the day, but they rarely move during the day. They usually hide in caves or rest in trees during the day. People from all over the world just want to have a look at these beautiful animals here, but it's really hard. However, one of the perks of working in a park is the increased odds of seeing these majestic animals. When Joshua was scheduled to work on the day, his excitement was palpable. 
he seemed to think today would be his lucky day. He didn't know how right his decision to drive an SUV was. This is standard procedure for patrol officers assigned to patrol designated areas. However, some places are rocky so they have to patrol on foot. Joshua likes it very much because he's an avid hiker in his free time, which has opened him up to sights. It's fate that he had to patrol on foot on this particular day, otherwise he would not have been there to save people. Joshua got to where he had to walk after two hours. Luckily, he didn't have much gear on him. It was a protected area and he carried nothing but a stick to defend himself. He didn't have any burdens. It only took him thirty minutes to get to Rocky Mountain. He stopped and took a rest. When he was lamenting how beautiful the scenery was, he suddenly heard a sound. Some suspicious voices made him nervous. He heard some rough noises and some people were shouting just outside the brush line. Joshua thought that they were not tourists wandering in the forest, but more threatening people, poachers. Joshua had a conflict with poachers many years ago. He did not deal with it at the time, but his mentor told him that the most important thing is to stay calm. He had to confirm whether they're poachers. He quietly climbed to the bushes and took a look. What he saw was four people walking together, weapons slung over their shoulders. Two of them were holding something else. One had a large furry animal over his shoulders, while the other held a sack. Unlike that big animal, that sack is mobile. Suddenly Joshua realized that the man had a leopard on his shoulder. Therefore, its cubs may be in the sack. Joshua quickly and quietly radioed for help. He was so nervous that he fell into the bushes. Poachers came to investigate what happened. They found Joshua who was angry. Without any hesitation, Joshua fought off a man holding an adult leopard and punched another. The man dropped the bag. Two other poachers were about to hurt Joshua when the radio broadcast from the base camp blared, which scared poachers away. They're afraid of being caught and punished. These poachers hit Joshua on the head. When Joshua came back to his senses, they had already escaped. He was shocked to find that it was the female leopard sitting in front of him. He felt disoriented. The anesthetic failed and the leopard was conscious. However, it's unable to get its cub out of the sack. It looked at Joshua in despair, growled softly and pushed the sack towards him with its nose. Joshua knew that the leopard was asking him for help. He stepped forward cautiously and opened the sack. Three faces appeared. They were obviously terrified. Joshua fell in love with them instantly. He knew he had to help them. The female leopard and her cubs need medical attention. The female leopard knew that Joshua could help them, so she hung around Joshua. Joshua and management decided they were going to help this family until they could go back to the forest. Joshua became their adoptive father within a week. He and three cubs are inseparable. They followed him in his van to patrol the park fence, ate and slept with him. They even accompanied him while he's reading. At the end of the day, Joshua always came back to the female leopard. He could hardly believe that this was the happiness bestowed upon him. He thought it was wonderful, but it would be over soon. Soon, the female leopard became anxious. Joshua knew it was time for them to return to the wild. They should live independently and comfortably in their natural habitat. Unfortunately, Joshua lost his friends. He didn't understand at first and returned to camp every few days. After days, Joshua thought it was over and he would never see them again. But he was wrong. One day while on patrol, he thought he was being followed. He was lucky. Three leopard cubs followed him. He was ecstatic. It lasted for several weeks. The cubs went behind him as will. Sometimes they would join him or say hello to him and move on. Joshua didn't realize how surprising the outcome would be. It was a hot day like the day he rescued leopards. He was on a hiking patrol on a rocky hill when he found a man sitting on a rock. Joshua thought he might be a tourist. He walked over to greet him, but he was wrong. 
sitting on the rock was a man who he is familiar with. When he turned around, Joshua realized he got it wrong. He was an escaped poacher. Before he escaped, he heard a loud thud. When he opened his eyes, he felt a headache. He had never experienced it before. He looked around and saw his companions restraining a man. Three leopards sat proudly beside him, which left him dumbfounded. He couldn't believe what he saw. After he sat up, a companion told him what had happened. Joshua was knocked down by a poacher, but what the poacher didn't expect his guardian to be leopards. They swooped on the poacher and subdued him. Joshua's co-workers radioed him and he didn't respond, so they looked for him. That's when they saw the poacher was beaten by a leopard, while Joshua passed out next to them. Just like he saved leopards, they saved him in completely unbelievable circumstances. Joshua cried and he put his arms around the leopards, thanking them for saving him. All his heroic deeds were rewarded by leopards and they saved him.